This is going to be a bit of a unique top 10 video as I have played a lot of both World of Warcraft and Guild Wars 2 in my life. Both games have taken inspiration from each other in a variety of different ways and today I want to go over what things in World of Warcraft could find their way to Guild Wars 2. This is not to say that any of these things should be in Guild Wars 2, this is just for fun and to discuss ideas. There are also a lot of things in WoW that aren't in Guild Wars 2 so I just picked the 10 that I personally would like to see or see a variation of in Guild Wars 2. Also, today is my birthday, so if you haven't subscribed, you should. In the number 10 spot is an expansion of the structured player vs player game mode by basically adding in new versions of the game mode, as in adding battlegrounds from World of Warcraft. Where in Guild Wars 2, the primary game mode in PvP is Conquest, 5v5 arenas with 3 control points with each map having a quirk. There have been some other game modes added over the years, such as Team Deathmatch and the Courtyard map, which was a ton of fun but basically unplayed the 2v2 and 3v3 competitive seasons, which are a ton of fun, and of course, Stronghold. Guild Wars 2's take on the MOBA genre, which had a mediocre reception but still sees some play, where we have these four game modes and then also custom arenas where people have made other game modes that basically rely on the honor system for the rule sets. And out of everything, Conquest is pretty much the only game mode that is played. Now, because of how Conquest is the primary game mode and how it has been for 11 years, it would be hard for newer game modes to come into the game, as is shown by the introduction of Stronghold three years into the game's lifespan, where most people stuck to Conquest because it's what they know. But despite those challenges, and in a world where these game modes would be played, I think more types of arenas would be incredibly fun. We have the basic game types like Capture the Flag like we see in Warsong Gulch. You can even add in something like Arathi Basin which is pretty similar to Conquest but has 5 points instead of 3 and kills don't matter. You can go the route of massive battlegrounds like Autrak Valley or Wintergrasp which could draw a lot from Road vs. Road with the different siege equipment and all the different structures, but instead of being an everlasting thing like Road vs. Road, it could be something like a massive arena that has 40 players fighting 40 players, where one team has to defend a keep for 30 minutes while the other team attacks. There are a lot of ideas that GW2 could draw from WoW when it comes to PvP and other games as well, where ultimately I think I would love to play other game types beyond Conquest and Stronghold, where I personally would definitely love to see some WVW game types that are more structured than WVW. In the number 9 spot are more quests or adventures or collections or whatever you want to call them. Now I don't mean quests like in World of Warcraft specifically, Guild Wars 2 purposely shied away from implementing quests like they are in WoW for good reason and to great success. However, over the years we have seen pieces of content implemented to the game that are similar to traditional quests. We have achievements like Knight of the Thorn and Burden of Choice which are absolutely incredible and some of my favorite pieces of content in Guild Wars 2. With the End of Dragons expansion we got a lot more stuff like that and in Secrets of the Obscure we got a few more as well, where at the very least I hope we continue to see these added in the future. But I want more. I want like a lot more. I want these added with every patch, where I think adding a bunch of these types of achievements to Corteria would be great where there could also be a new UI overhaul for the achievements panel that can make it easier for players, especially newer players, to navigate these achievements and to see what content is available for them to do, where these collections can provide a lot of supplemental story for areas in the older world that could help players who are interested in the lore and story of the game to learn more about that. Maybe it could help provide a better understanding for some stuff coming up in the game, like perhaps a quest related to the White Mantle and Krita, or it could help provide a better understanding of what has happened in the past, like a quest related to the dwarves and the shiver peaks. We could also throw some items as rewards for these achievements, maybe exotic pieces of gear, new relics, special minis, and so on, where we see the potential that quests and WoW have for adding supplemental story to the game, and we have seen how that works in Guild Wars 2 through these achievements, and I hope we see more and that we see this system expanded in the future. In the number 8 spot are reputations. This is a feature that I personally have wanted in the game for a very long time, just because of how much I love reputations in World of Warcraft where you can complete quests, dailies, and do other things in order to gain reputation with the different factions in Azeroth that will unlock achievements and vendors where you can buy rewards. Where in Guild Wars 2, I would want this as an account-wide progression system that basically puts in more content and the sense of grinding, but also unlocks cosmetic rewards that players can work towards. Where basically, there could be multiple tiers that you work towards and each tier unlocks more and more rewards, where you can get a special item that puts a buff on you that will allow you to gain reputation with your selected reputation by killing enemies and completing certain parts of the game. Maybe you'll get like 5 points or something from killing an enemy, 15 from killing a champion, 300 for completing a dungeon, and so on and so forth across all the pieces of the content in the game. Where there are a lot of potential factions in Guild Wars 2 that you could earn reputation with. 
the Seraph and Kryda, the Wolfborn and the Shiver Peaks, the Lion Guard across Central Tyria, the Itzo and Heart of Thorns, the Ministry of Security and Ender Dragons, the Astral Ward, the Wardens, the Vigil, and so on and so forth. There could be special turn-ins like we see with faction provisioners, or maybe completing certain events will reward certain reputations. Like if you help defend a Lion Guard Haven during an event, you will earn a reputation with the Lion Guard. Whereas you progress your reputation with the Lion Guard, you unlock special Lion Guard armor skins that allows you to deck out your character in a unique way. Maybe partway through, you unlock a special mini. Then when you max out your reputation, you can buy a special Lion Guard armored mount skin for the Raptor or Warclaw or something. There's just a lot of potential for a system like this. There are a lot of factions that could have a reputation added to them. There's a lot of integration with older and newer content that could be done. There are a lot of potential rewards that could be added. And I personally would have an absolute blast with a system like this. I would have a ton of fun maxing out all my different reputations. And the number 7 spot is looking for a group. Now a lot of people might be angry by this idea, but I think there is some interesting stuff to think about. Where we have the current LFG system in the game that works as a bulletin board, and it's honestly pretty good even if it could use some improvements. Where this type of LFG is in World of Warcraft, but there's also an LFG system that will automatically put you in a group with other people and teleport you to an instance where you and that group complete that instance. Now a major issue with this in Guild Wars 2 is our roles are more complicated than they are in World of Warcraft. You have different types of tanks, healers, and boon supports that could be seen across different professions. I mean, looking at a Firebrand player, they could be a Condition DPS, a Condition Quickness boon support, or a Quickness boon support healer, where when it comes to organizing raids through an automatic LFG tool, it would be a nightmare. But what I would mostly be interested in is seeing an LFG tool for pieces of content that don't need this type of composition specifically dungeons and dragon response missions. These are pieces of 5 player content that don't see a lot of attention, or when it comes to dungeons, it is pretty easy to find a group for them, but a lot of people don't like to form the group for the dungeon, and beyond that, it still takes some time to find players in the off hours. Or we could have an automated tool that will let players queue up for one of these and go off in the road and do other things, then get a prompt when a group is formed to teleport the group to the instance, allowing them to do the instance before teleporting them back to the world. There could be a queue for story dungeons, exploration dungeons, normal dragon response missions, and challenge dragon response missions. We could eventually see this tool expanded to other areas of the game should they ever die or seem worthy for this. Like maybe tier 1 and tier 2 fractals, but nothing above that. Or maybe things like the holiday instances like Tix's Infernarium or Ascent to Madness, though it is incredibly easy to form a group for those. But overall, I think this tool is an interesting idea that could be done correctly if implemented carefully and I think it could help bring some life to older content while also helping new players find groups for that content. And the number 6 spot is kind of an overhaul to the concept of festivals in Guild Wars 2. In my opinion, Guild Wars 2 has the single greatest festival events in all of gaming, where I do not want them changed at all with the exception of new rewards and mini games and whatnot. But one thing that WoW does is to decorate a lot of the world whenever that festival is going on. Like during the Hollows End festival that recently happened, you can find decorations in most major towns, where in Guild Wars 2, it's a lot more limited. I would love to see all the Crichton Towns decked out with Shadow of the Mad King, Winter's Day, and Lunar New Year decorations. I would love to see Super Adventure Box creatures pop out of machines in different cities during Super Adventure Box, and so on and so forth. Additionally, I would love to see more minor festivals added. Guild Wars 2's six festivals are fantastic, and I love them. And I think they are a good balance and work well throughout the year, where I would not want another major festival on this level. But what I would love to see is more minor festivals like what we can see in World of Warcraft and even in the original Guild Wars. Random stuff like Pirate's Day where there are special pirate NPCs in some cities, everyone talks like a pirate, and maybe there's a big fireworks showcase in Lion's Arch or something at the top of every hour. Random stuff like Peon's Day, or just take the idea of smaller events in general. Maybe a week-long Meetoberfest where you can get special cooking recipes and food items, a special PvP arena week in the Black Citadel, a harvest festival, and so on. There are just a lot of ideas that could be implemented, and I hope to see them in the future. And the number 5 spot is Pet Battles. Now this is really random, and if we ever see this type of system introduced to Guild Wars 2, I would want it to be Polymock, which has been hinted at and is something from the original Guild Wars, where if we were to dive into the idea of Pet Battles from World of Warcraft as they are, this could be a more casual PvP minigame that players can do, where you could have PvE masters around the world, can use your minis that you have unlocked, which each have special abilities, fight players in special arenas, have a bunch of different achievements, titles, and rewards, and so on. Where I don't think Guild Wars 2 really needs this, but it could be fun. But what I want more is Polymock, which could be implemented in pretty much the same way that I said, but instead of relying on minis, they could add Polymock pieces which you could unlock around the world and use against PvE masters and other players. 
When it comes to the PvP aspect of this game mode, there is a massive issue of it potentially dying, like how it has become difficult to do pet battles in World of Warcraft because of the lack of a player base. But as long as two players, such as yourself and a friend, are interested in playing, then it shouldn't be too big of an issue when it comes to completing achievements and whatnot. Where with either polymock or some sort of mini battles, I think this is interesting to talk about and we could see a cool thing added to Guild Wars 2 in some capacity. In the number 4 spot is Mentor Chat. This is a pretty common system that we see was added to World of Warcraft in the form of the Newcomer Chat, where, from what I personally have seen, the system seems pretty good where it has an optional chat channel that allows new players to ask questions and more experienced players to answer them. A lot of people have complaints with the system because of some obvious issues that would arise from a system like this. A global chat is prone to be chaotic and off topic, and a chat in general can be problematic in nature depending on what type of person has access to it, but that's just a reality of MMOs. Where if a mentor chat was added to Guild Wars 2, I think it could be cool. Or there could be some sort of phasing or whatever that means that random groups of people will be in different chat rooms so it's not the entire player base. Obviously, you would want it to be an optional chat where you can leave it and rejoin it whenever you want, where new players could get a pop-up when they reach level 5 to join the chat. Players you have unlocked a mentor tag, as in players you have played for about 50 hours or who bought a boost and played for a few hours, could have a special badge in the chat. This could provide some sort of direction for new players and seeing who some more experienced players are in the chat. But of course, there's always the issue with veteran players giving bad or incorrect information, which is inevitable. Where I think overall, this could be a great system to allow players to support other players. And the number 3 spot is an ability to watch cinematics. This is a feature in World of Warcraft that I have been wanting in Guild Wars 2 for a while. From a selfish point of view, this would be great with getting certain clips for different videos that I want without having to do a bunch of stuff in order to get to those clips. Or for other players, this could be a way to rewatch cinematics or look at cinematics for pieces of content that they want to learn the story about but not do. Perhaps in Lion's Arch, we could have a prior scholar that will replay cinematics you have experienced throughout the entire story. Or in the Aerodrome, we could have a prior scholar that will play all of the raid cinematics. Or on the character select screen, we could have a button to watch cinematic trailers for different expansions and living world releases. And so on and so forth where I think this would be great to have in the game for players like me, and for anyone who wants to watch cinematics for whatever reason. And the number 2 spot is Transmog Presets. This is a feature in World of Warcraft that would probably blow up the Guild Wars 2 community from how much people would love it, and could also make ArenaNet a lot of money I suppose. Where currently, we have build templates and equipment templates. These allow you to store builds and items on templates to swap them out when you want. Like how you could have a DPS build and armor on a template, and then a healing build and armor on another. Where an interesting thing about equipment templates is how they can store your transmutes on what your armor looks like, meaning you can kind of already save different outfits. However, this has a few issues, where this requires you to swap out your armor for other armor just to have a different set. And perhaps you want to change how your armor looks without changing everything out, or perhaps you want to spend time customizing your character's outfit and then save that customization to a template to pull out later. Well in World of Warcraft, you can do this, and this is generally a loved feature in the game. And knowing the Guild Wars 2 community and how important character customization is for people in this game, Guild Wars 2 players would absolutely love to see this. And now for the number 1 spot. For a feature found in World of Warcraft that I would love to see added to Guild Wars 2 the most, and it's expanding the idea of ends. The Guild Wars 2 world has a fundamental issue that has bothered me a bit over the years, and is that a lot of towns in the game don't feel useful. Most of the time, players will congregate in or return to certain areas of the game. The major cities, convenience pass hubs, and expansion hubs like the Wizard's Tower. For this is great, but I feel like it takes a bit away from the rest of the world. Where I would love to see towns be more useful, and I think one way this could be implemented is through expanding the rested buff that was introduced to the Arborstone Inn and was expanded to the Wizard's Tower. Where when you are in Arborstone or the Wizard's Tower, you will accumulate an experience buff that accumulates while you are offline as well. Where I would love to see an option I gain this buff in certain buildings around the world. We could have this added to every tavern and inn in the game, which would serve as a good stopping point for a player's adventures. Perhaps you want to return to Shaymor and log out at the Shaymor Inn, since you are in the nearby fields, or if you are in the Crystal Desert, you could return to the Amnoon Tavern. Now there are two major issues with the system. The first is that the majority of players would probably just return to where they normally go to, since this buff would be implemented there as well. And second is that if this buff is only in certain taverns, like one of the taverns in Divinity's Reach, and isn't available in the rest of Divinity's Reach, the player base will be angry. When this buff was originally added, you could only get it while on the Arborstone Inn, and a large chunk of the community freaked out and were upset about this to the point that the buff was added to the rest of Arborstone, which me personally, I was a bit disappointed by the situation from a role-playing perspective. 
I love the idea of returning to an inn to relax and sleep for the evening before coming back the next day and feeling recharged for the upcoming adventure. And I personally would love to see this buff added to every inn in the game with perhaps a marker on the map showing where these inns are for new players. And maybe go back to each town and add a few more things as well. Like make sure there is one of each type of merchant in each village of the road, maybe throw on random banks, trading posts, or loan crafting stations in various towns. And just add a lot more flavor to the towns of the game which make them more meaningful for players to stop at. Places like the Mabon Market are a lot more meaningful to me than places like Cratebane Haven in the same map because of how much stuff is going on there. Or to summarize this entire section, go through every town in the game, add the ability to get the rested bonus at various inns and taverns, and maybe overhaul some of the towns in the game along the way to make them more meaningful. And that's my list. I hope you enjoyed. To reiterate what I said at the start of the video, all the ideas in this list are things that could be added to Guild Wars 2. This video isn't saying anything should be added, we're just talking about some fun ideas. There are definitely some things that I would love to see in Guild Wars 2, like the transmute templates and the overhaul of towns, but I am not expecting them to be added, nor do I think they need to be added. Guild Wars 2 is already a great game without them. I hope you all are taking good care of yourselves. Have a good one everyone.